All right, so let's jump right back in here. Here are the two of the simplest Sterling engines I could come up with. Now there's many designs out there, very many designs, but you gotta get the ones that are very simple because you're gonna be able to rebuild these things with off the shelf parts. So keep it simple, stupid. That's what Stanley Myers would say. Don't make it complicated. This is my favorite one in the front here. I couldn't wait to show this to you guys. So if you want to make electrical power so you can generate hydrogen and oxygen gas and get the lights turned on, I'm going to show you guys how you can come out on top of the energy game here. Because with the Stirling engine, it's just smooth sailing from here out. Making electricity is no problem. We're going to get those DC turbines spinning. Let's make some electrical power. Let's get this thing going. I'm going to put this behemoth back together here, this wet cell, and let's make some, some electrical power. We'll get the lights turned on. Go ahead and get the motor running and turn the lights on. So the more you work with HHO gas and hydrogen, you're going to be seeing creatures from the past. You're going to be traveling back in time. You're going to be working with electricity, physics, atoms, the table of elements. You're going to speak with mythical beasts. You're going to see leviathans. You're going to read things in ancient stone and see ancient gods and idols. Glorious kings. You're going to learn about your atomic self. You're going to battle these snakes. You're even going to see dragons and fire and stuff like that. This is what HHO is all about. You're going to see tetrahedrons. Aliens, 
See, there's more to HHO than people see. Crop circles, unicorns, you name it. Behemoths. I mean, is it all just stuff man made up in his mind? I mean, you gotta ask yourself, what's man been smoking over the past centuries? But I look at it like this, like it's one big chess game. Think of it like this, it's a galactic chess game. And a lot of us, we're the little guy here. We're like the pawn. We're usually taken out in some cheap move. Yeah, I know it sucks, but it doesn't have to be like that. So I've learned that the pawn is the most important character on the board. He can come out on top every time. I've won many a chess games where the pawn was the most important piece of the game, the linchpin. So with hydrogen and HHO, the pawn comes out on top. So think about this, these motors, these engines were designed back during the industrial revolution. They were major competitors with the steam engine. This is an external combustion engine. And they were built by men back when they dreamed of going to the stars and freedom. I mean these things simply could not fail, they built these in their image. I wish I could build something like this, so I'm going to have to copy it. These are magnificent power generators, you can actually put these on boats. So if you look at my Sterling engine book here, you can clearly see that these things work very well. They're quiet power plants and you can put them right on a boat and travel around in the water. There's a cutout of the one that's on the front of this book right here. That's what's on the table here. It's an amazingly simple Alpha engine. It doesn't get any simpler than that. That's the walking beam engine. And this is the simple flat version. Check it out. I mean, look how easy that is. It's very simple to copy and build ones like that. And that's why I chose these models. They make many different Sterling engines. They're fancy. I mean, you can get all kinds of them. But I needed to generate electrical power so I can make HHO gas, hydrogen and oxygen, and then separate those two gases for storage. So that's what's going on here. Look at these guys driving in the boat. And they had to hide them at the time. The skiff was powered and concealed by the Sterling engine. It was in a cardboard box. They didn't want anybody to see them driving around with it. This was high technology at the time. They were competing with the combustion engine. And these things came out to be a lot more powerful than the gasoline engine. A lot of people don't know that.
All right, we're going to use it to generate some HHO gas. And this is the idea here. We want to be able to use these engines to generate electrical power to fill our hydrogen tanks. And it don't matter if you got to go chop down a tree and put a log under this thing. You can always make gas. That's what I wanted to show you. What's funny, as soon as I put on my safety gear, my cats take off. They know what this is. All right, let me start this up. They don't like water. They definitely don't like HHO. How'd you get up there? What are you doing on the roof? Get off the roof. Let's scoot it up here. Should do it. The shady trees cover him with their shadow. The willows of the brook compass him about. When I read that, I think about the electromagnetic field that's being given off by the oxyhydrogen water fuel cell reactor core down here at the bottom. So these are energies that you can't see that are being given off. There's a lot more power here than you think. So anytime you turn on the electrical power, you can see the electromagnetic field using a compass. See? So there's a lot of energies that we can't see that we're not using yet, but we will in the future. So think about that. The main reactor on the ship, you could rotate it. A rotating water fuel cell giving off an electromagnetic field as a generator. Just something I was thinking about.